Are you ready to eat home-cooked Argentinian food with the local people? It's time to chow down on delicious guiso, sopa paraguayo, and more. Our adventure starts right now. Buenos dias, everybody. Welcome back to Iguazu Falls in Argentina. We have a super special episode planned for today. I'm here with my local friend, Dario. Him and his mother are about to serve us up a real deal authentic Argentine spread for lunch. Dario, tell the people at home a little bit about yourself and what we're going to eat today. Hey guys, this is Dario from Iguazu Falls and we're gonna have in a local lunch today which is called guiso, sopa paraguaya with the yuca that we call mandioca. Whoa, that smells delicious. In just a few minutes, we're gonna go inside Dario and his mother's home, take a tour of the kitchen, and get an up-close view of what mama is cooking us for lunch today. Before we go on in, I would greatly appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe button so you can stay tuned for all my future adventures. Uh, okay, so we are in Iguazu. Uh, my name is Dario, and I work with my mom, and we host people here from all over the world in our Airbnb. And today we're gonna to have some guiso, which is kind of paella in, in the world. Yeah. So we're gonna have some parrots, some onion, some cheese, and some little vegetables. Ajo. Um, ajo, I don't know how to say in English. Uh, well, whatever. <laughs> so we're gonna have here some chicken. Ooh, fresh chicken. Yeah, fresh mm -hmm. chicken. And that's the olla, the bowls. Yeah. That's the, the olla is the olla. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And that's the, that's the famous guiso. Guiso is very common for us to eat here because it's, it's very powerful and it's fast and it's delicious. So is, is, is guiso like a soup or a stew? You can do both. It can Ooh, be soup or okay. rice. Yeah, it's very nice. And also mandioca, which is called yuca. Everybody knows about yuca, which is boiling in there. Yuca? Yuca. Okay. It's yuca. It's mandioca. We call mandioca in South America. But they call yuca, it's more famous as a yuca. Yes, the yu I've had yuca fries before and very, very nice. So is she frying those or boiling those? She's right boiling now? those and you can also eat it fried, but after it's boiled. You cannot fry it right away. You have to boil it first and then you can fry them. And then you can with snack, beers or whatever. Got it, so we make it tender first by boiling in it and then it's time to fry. Oh, it looks like she's getting oh, some sort of like, is this the batter? No, no? this is something different. This is gonna be sopa paraguaya. It's like a cake with a flour of the, 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 it's flour of uh, corn. Oh, corn flour, okay. Corn flour, yeah, corn flour. And what she's adding, what is she adding Decía to it? tiene cebolla. Onions. Huevo. I, eggs. Aceite. Oil. Uh, it was um, in the, um, uh, and milk. And in milk? Me. Yeah. I wish you were all here right now because the house smells amazing. It smells delicious. There's a lot of aromas floating in the air from the guiso that's being cooked. We are so, yeah, so excited. And now the cheese, this is, this is homemade cheese. Homemade cheese? Yeah, from wow. the farm, yeah. Queso casero, mm -hmm. yeah. Queso casero, Queso homemade casero, homemade, wow. yeah. Homemade, um, queso, me un queso. Try one. Yes, absolutely. Ooh, it's nice and soft. Pow. Mmm. Very, very fresh. Nice out. Very mild, very smooth cheese flavor and texture to it. That's really, really good queso. Wow. From we the replace the mandioca with the bread. Some people put, uh, whenever they're eating the food, you know, the food, you push the, the food with the bread, uh -huh. you know, but we use mandioca. We replace the bread with the mandioca, with the yuca. Ah, with the yuca, okay. Probably it's, it's also more healthier than the bread, I imagine, because it's a vegetable. It gets you fat, it gets you fat anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Dario, growing up, what was the favorite dish that your mama Lula would cook for you as a kid? And what, what do you still love Definitely now? Definitely is this one. That's why I choose to this have this flavor here today. Yeah, yeah. Chipa, uh, sopa paraguaya and guiso, which is paella. Like, but we have European influence in Argentina. Sure. And we make our own paella, which we call guiso. When I was in Spain, I ate a ton of paella. So delicious. In Spain, you're usually going to find it made with a mix of rice, uh, and shrimp and other seafoods and sometimes they throw a bunch of other different uh, proteins and vegetables in there as well but generally paella is considered a rice and then a protein dish right yeah, exactly yeah mm -hmm. we can do it with pasta or with rice but today we're gonna do it with rice mommy yeah with rice 
Oh, very nice. Oh, and here go the vegetables in. Cebolla, sí, le dije cebolla. Onion. Got some onion. Cebollita verde. Eh, el del spring onion. The spring onion, yeah. yeah. Morrón. Um, um, the one that I told you yesterday, remember, I forgot. The the has uh, different colors. This pepper, 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 pepper mix, yeah. Ajo. Ajo. Zanahoria. Eh, on a uh, parrot. Carrots. Carrot. Yeah. Carrot. Carrot. Okay. No bar. <laughs> Oh, the smells are getting incredible. I can see the vegetables starting to starting to simmer in there, starting to dance. Wow, 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 wow. Yo, thank both of you so much for inviting us into your house to try this It's a pleasure. Food. We provide experience, oh, people. We're so, so excited. This is the real deal, authentic Argentine cooking right here. And Dario, just like most Argentines, you love mate, right? Definitely in the morning, the afternoon, when it's hot, <laughs> when it's cloudy, when it's cold, uh, cold, mate every time for me. Mate anytime, mate anytime. We're also going to walk around the property here and show you Dario and his mother's amazing Airbnb. This is such an incredibly nice place. They have a pool. We are staying in our own apartment on the grounds here. We've got two bedrooms all to ourselves. We're going to give you a full tour of that right after we eat. But for now, we're just going to enjoy the wonderful smells in here and uh, watch Lula do her magic. Exactly, yeah. Dario, how long have you and your mother lived in this house? I, I'm from Iguazu. I grew up here. I born here for seven, 37 years already. 37 just, yeah. years in the same house. Exactly. Wow. And we made, I move out already from this house. So we made our places a place to stay for 40 people to make them feel as a, one, of, one of us. And if you're uh, curious about booking this Airbnb, I will, leave a, uh, I will leave a link in the description down below so you can contact Dario yourself and stay here. This is uh, so amazing. The, the, you offer everything. Pool. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We try to help people. We advise them where to go. We also invite them to eat with us, you know. In the Bible say, when two people eat, more, can pe more people can eat as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now the sopa de paraguayo. Sopa paraguayo. Sopa paraguayo has go gone to the into the oven. Exactly. Go to the oven right now and we have to give us... ¿Cuánto va a 30 minutos o menos? 30 minutes in about... It's going to be ready. 30 minutes. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So now we wait. Lula continues to work her magic. Yeah, we're going to have three plates. Guiso, sopa paraguayo and mandioca. Yuca. Oh, man. I cannot wait, man. I cannot wait. All right, while we're waiting for the food to be done, let's take a little tour of the Airbnb on the outside. While we wait for Dario and his mom to prepare the food, let's take a little tour of this beautiful Airbnb we've been staying at for the past three days. I'm just gonna turn the camera around here. And I mean, here is, is the main attraction right here. Here is the star. Beautiful, beautiful pool. The water is so refreshing. Come on in, come on in, come on in, take a dip. Uh, so we've been staying in this unit right here. Dario and his mother's house is right there. They've actually got a store in front. These are some real entrepreneurs. They've got an Airbnb, and then they've got a full store in the front. So if you need beer, water, snacks, whatever, they can take care of you here as well. We are in that unit over there, but then there's another unit right there. Let's go inside and check out, uh, I don't even know what you would call this, not quite an apartment, uh, but our own little unit, our own little home uh, where we've spent the better part of the past three days. Let's take a quick tour in here. There's Lindsay. Say hi to everybody, Lindsay. Hello. How much do you love this Airbnb? I love it so much. Major apologies. We have turned this place uh, into a mess. We have stuff everywhere, so don't mind the mess. It's going to look a lot nicer when you stay here. So we walk into the kitchen. Boom. We got the oven. Boom. We got the refrigerator. Boom. We got the desk to work at and the Wi-Fi is booming. Here. Super important if you're a digital nomad or someone like me who needs to do important things like check sports scores or lottery numbers, things like that. The internet is good. No reason to show you the bathroom. Uh, everything you could imagine that was in there, a toilet, a shower. Here's just one of the bedrooms. This is where uh, we've been staying. Gear, gear all over the place. Got a big, I think it's like a double, double size bed here. Super well enough for two people. Uh, then we got a little bunk bed action over here too. Walking back into room number two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's turn on the lights. Okay. Again, two bunk beds and then another double size bed. So you could stack one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people could stay in this room. Maybe even nine if someone wants to be on the couch. 
an incredible amount of room. The price of this Airbnb is super low. I'm not going to tell you because I think the rate does change depending on the season and the day of the week, um, but definitely check online so you can make sure to get the best price. Okay, I think I'm starting to smell some of the food wafted from the kitchen in here. So we're gonna go check on the food and chow down. No worries. Oh, we got the we got the table all set. Woo, starting to get feel pretty warm in here. I like it. I like it. It smells amazing. Sopa paraguaya. Paraguaya. Sopa paraguaya. Wow. Look at that golden brown color coming off it. Starting to see that sizzle on top. Wow, 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 wow. And was there cheese on there? The cheese, yeah. Cheese, wow. Look at the queso. You can see it kind of like boiling on top. Look at those bubbles dancing. Oh, it smells amazing. I was just telling Dario and Lula that I've literally starved myself all day. I only had a cup of coffee in preparation for this gigantic lunch. Super, super excited. Again, the aroma filling this house. Oh, it smells like some real down home cooking. Ooh, and now Mama is pulling the yuca out of the pot. Ooh. Is that is that all yuca? So it might be a little bit hard. It might be a little bit hard. It'll be okay. hard, yeah, yeah, because sometimes when it's very, very old yuca, it's no when even if you boil a lot, it doesn't get like very. Um, uh, what is the blend of soft? Like, soft, like, soft, ah, yeah, soft, yeah, soft, soft. Okay. No worries, any yuca is good yuca. Oh, look at the steam coming off of those, freshly <laughs> boiled. Wow. <laughs> Lindsay, so I know you weren't here before. This is sopa paraguayo, paraguaya? Paraguaya. Sopa paraguaya. Could you just tell Lindsay again what is in this amazing dish? You have cheese, you have onion, you have milk, and you have eggs. And everything mixed in the blender and then in the oven and looks like a okay, cake now. And they're using real farm-raised queso, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, as exactly, fresh yeah. as it gets. Everything is fresh. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Mama cutting up the sopa paraguaya. <laughs> Looks like pizza almost. <laughs> oh, gracias, gracias. Yeah. <laughs> Should we sit? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we take the first bite, I just want to express how thankful I am uh, for you inviting us into your home no, and it's uh, a pleasure to, share, us. to share a meal with you. This is uh, very unique and very special. <laughs> it really, really means a lot to us. Our, our stay here has been incredible. You've all been so kind and and so generous. Awesome. We're glad you feel that way. Mm -hmm. All right, should we tear in? Should we take our first bite? Of course, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and go for it. All right, Lindsay, would you hold the camera, please? All right, I'm gonna take my first bite of Sopa Paraguaya. Ooh, looks really warm and flaky. Almost looks like cornbread with cheese that we would make back down south in the United States. Ooh. Get a close up there with that big gob of that queso cheese coming out of there. Woo! Looks super <laughs> ooey and gooey. All right, here we go. First big bite. Pow. Mmm. <laughs> oh, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Super, super hot, fresh out of the oven. Maybe give it a second before I take another bite. But an incredibly rich, buttery flavor to it. It's really, really moist. Not, not dry at all. The cheese gives it a real uh, gives it a really nice smoothness and creaminess to it, and then the outside we've got the bit here that has been um, kind of cooked and just a little bit crispy. So it's a nice mix of crispiness mixed in with that smooth, ooey, gooey middle. Wow, wow, wow! Sopa paraguayo. This is this is amazing. It's kind of like a cheese bread, but not even fair to like call it a cheese bread. I'm really digging the flavor that the onion adds to the dish. It kind of reminds me of the Fugaceta pizzas that we've had throughout Argentina. It adds a really nice flavor element uh, to the entire dish. The corn flakes that are put in here also give it that nice little bit of crunch too. This is delicious and a great way to start off lunch. <laughs> Living in the dripper border, this one is only made in here. It's made in Paraguay in part of Argentina and a little part of Brazil. So you're not gonna find this in nowhere in the world. 
<laughs> yeah, I've never had anything like this anywhere in the world. I've had uh, things that are similar to it, but not as flavorful, not as ooey, not as gooey, way, way more dry. Okay, Mama is about to pour up some of the guiso. Oh, taking a big, big scoop of that. Wow. Big, heavy portions. We've got the delicious chicken in there that's been stewing. Oh, the flavor and the, the smell that's coming off of that. Oh, thank you so, so much, Mama. Wow, wow. <laughs> Let's take an up close look at that. I am so excited. If this is half as good as the sopa paraguaya, <laughs> then I am in <laughs> for an <laughs> absolute <laughs> treat. <laughs> Lindsay's getting a big plate served up to her. Can't wait to get your reaction on your first bite here in a little bit, Lindsay. So we just said a little prayer here to start off the meal. And now we're about to dig in for our first taste of the guiso. Cannot wait, so, so excited. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> All right, before we tear into the yuca, it's main event time. Right here, we've got the guiso. Look at that, it's got this amazing rice that's been stewing in that variety of sauce and vegetables for the past few hours. We've got nice chunks of chicken in here. All right, let's try our first bite of the guiso. Here we go, let's get some of that rice in there. I love how the vegetables were so thinly and finely chopped that they just kind of blend in yeah. with that sauce. Pow. Mmm. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. This is so, so good. So rich. So flavorful. The onions, the garlic in there, the tomato, I can taste it all. The pepper is adding just the tiniest little bit of heat to it. The rice was cooked to perfection. Very, very tender. Wow. It's like an explosion of flavor in my mouth. It reminds me of actually my mother's cooking. I'm not just saying that because we're cooking with someone's mother, but my mother used to make a dish called Spanish rice hot dish. It was very similar to this. I think it used a lot of the same ingredients, a lot of the same in vegetables, and it's just really, really giving me a taste of my childhood and a, and a taste of home right now. This is so, so good. Boiling hot, even though it's a very, very hot day, I feel like you would eat this on any day. You could eat this. Oh, and, and the yuca. Okay, we gotta go grab the yuca in just a minute here. One more bite though. Mmm. It's so, so good. Okay, Lindsay, I'm not gonna make you hold the camera anymore. I'm gonna let you get your own bite. Okay, it's yuca time. Dario told me that the yuca they used uh, is, is just a little old, so it's gonna be a, just a little bit hard, so he suggested we let it sop up all the juices from the guiso. Here we go, if you've never had yuca before, very similar to like a potato. Pow. Mmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's not hard at all. It's, no, it's, it's I mean, in a, in a blind taste test, you would almost think that it was a potato. It's got a very nice buttery element to it, very soft. It, it, was, it was super, super tender. It did a nice job of soaking up some of the flavors in the guiso as well. I'm beyond blown away by this meal. We've been to a lot of restaurants in Argentina. We've had a lot of traditional cooking, but this is the first time we've had a home cooked meal and it tastes just a little bit better because I'm sure it's made with love. She made it in 30 minutes. 30 minutes, all it took. Wow, wow, wow. 30 minutes, it all. 30 minutes. Wow, I can't even make a frozen pizza in 30 minutes by myself and, and we made all this here. So as I said earlier, we're in Iguazu, which is the northern part of Argentina. We are on the border of Paraguay and Brazil. Because the vegetables in here are so fresh and tasty and because Dario told us that the queso, the cheese, was made from a farm close by, I'm very curious what farming life is like here. Dario, could you tell us a little bit about farming culture here in Iguazu? What kind of vegetables and fruits grow? Thanks God, we have a very healthy and very nice earth that what everything grows properly, onion, garlic, potato, and everything. And the cheese we just have tried, it came from Paraguay, because my grandma, she lives in the farm in Paraguay, so I had to cross Brazil and Paraguay last week, and she gave me a huge piece of, of cheese, so it was also made in the farm, in the real farm in Paraguay. Wow, so hold up, so this cheese, this queso, was imported technically from Paraguay? Exactly, yeah. Wow, cross-country cheese. Yeah, and then, yeah, tomatoes, potato, everything comes from out of Iguazu, but here, if you want to plant something, it grows very fast, we have a, a very rich health here. 
And is the weather like this all year long or is there a rainy season? It can be sunny and suddenly it can be rainy and suddenly it can be sunny again. We have a subtropical weather so it changes very often. So because we're very close to a giant long and winding river, a lot of the restaurants here serve a variety of fish like Dorado and Pacao or Paku as you may say. Um, I'm curious Dario, will you, do you buy fish? Do you fish yourself? And how often is fish eaten here uh, within Iguazu and I, I, is, is the fish good? I guess would be the other question. It's optional because we got two rivers here, the Iguazu that come from the poles and also the Paraná River that finished in Buenos Aires. So you got the option to go and fish in the river or you have the, the fish places here, the store, so you can buy them. So you got two options or you can go and spend the time fishing or you go to the store to get some fish. And will, will a lot of people go out and fish? Like growing up, did you fish a lot? Normally, no, because we have all the way down to go to the river, so it's kind of hard to get there. Oh, yeah, okay. that's why probably most of the people, they prefer to buy. But yeah. some of the people, they go to fish, and then they sell it. What is your favorite fish that comes from the river that you eat El here? Dorado. El Dorado. I had that the very other night. Nice, very yeah. big. Yeah, very, very big, very, very yeah. Nice. It's nice with um, blue cheese. It's Ooh. amazing. It's very nice. Cheese on fish. I haven't yeah. tried that yet. Blue cheese. Blue especially. cheese. Blue cheese on the top. Yeah. Blue That's... cheese with fish. It may add and white wine. Oh. Very nice. Taste. Very tasty. Yeah. Very enjoyable. I think I'm ready for a, a fish dinner now. This sounds that sounds <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Lindsay, what did you think of the delicious spread we had today for lunch? It is the best meal we have had in weeks. I'm I'm so happy. It's so so good. I was I was I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed everything. I knew I was going to like it. Um, but the Sopa Paraguaja, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have dreams about it. I wanna make that when I get home. I love the fact that it had onions and cheese in it that really took it up to another level. I saw that your mother, she was kind of scraping the crusty sides. Yeah, it's crust. very nice, very tasty. Yeah. You know, the crispy side, mm. the Sopa Paraguaja is nice. So when you have food like that left over, will you then, will you keep it in the uh, refrigerator? Will you then eat it cold? Thank we you. put it in the refrigerator to have it later on mm -hmm. uh, and to have it at night mm -hmm. or even tomorrow if it's still good. Even tomorrow. So tell me a little bit about, you just said your uncle had a birthday. Cumpleaños feliz to him. Yeah. <laughs> what will you normally cook for a birthday celebration? Will you have postres like kid, barbecue, barbecue, asado? Barbecue is amazing, yeah. Barbecue with sala, yuca, always this one. Is always very, yuca, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. This one is in everywhere. in. Argentina, no, in Iguazu. And barbecue is the most things we do, or Argentinian empanadas as oh. well. Yeah, those are the most very Argentinian food we normally eat when we hang out in birthday parties and those Yum, yum, yum. We, we ate so many empanadas throughout Buenos Aires when we were down north as well. We had some <laughs> delicious seafood flavored ones. What's your favorite empanada? Is it the classic carne? The classic carne yeah. one, the very Argentinian one. Very Argentinian one, oh. I'm getting hungry again now. And how can we forget, we also had some red wine, some vino as well. I'm not a red wine drinker, so I didn't have any, but Lindsay and the family was more than happy to partake. And that's that. I cannot express how thankful and grateful I am towards Lula and her son, Dario, for inviting us into their home and blessing us with this incredibly delicious meal. Lindsay and I, our bellies are absolutely full. Uh, this was definitely one of the most memorable experiences that we've had here uh, during our almost two months in Argentina. So if you come here, try as best as you can to stay at Dario's Airbnb. It is absolutely incredible. If for whatever reason you can't book the Airbnb with him, please reach out to him. I'm sure he would be more than happy to show you around the falls and invite you into his home so you can get a real authentic Argentine cooking experience as well. So thank you all so much again. It was such an amazing well, day. You guys. Yes, yes, they will, they will be here soon. My name's Brent Tim and I'm saying ciao for now. <laughs>